hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Coffee here. And today we're back with how to kit up your diamond painting. So you got your first diamond painting and you don't know where to start where Miss Coffee is going to show you. So kitting up your diamond painting is essentially a way to organize your diamonds or your drills as we like to call them. It's a way to organize your drills to make your diamond painting experience just that much easier. You have your choice of storage solutions. I'm going to show you a couple that I have, and then you can go search for your own storage solution, whichever one works best for you, okay? All right, so the first one I'm going to show you is called the Elizabeth Ward containers. Now, as you can see, these containers are actually really popular when it comes to diamond painting, as you can probably see why as the containers come in many different sizes. So these typically have quite a few slots for you to be able to store your diamond paintings in. You come with, they come with little, medium, um, well, small, extra small, small, medium, large. So the way they work is you just kind of pop the top open like that. and you put your diamonds in. They're nice, safe, and secure in there, safe from little hands, because it does take a little bit of dexterity and finger strength to get that open, especially these little ones. <laughs> so it takes some real finger strength to get those open. So if you're someone like me that has tiny little hands in your house, this might be a good solution for you as it does hold quite a few colors as you can see and a numerous amount of sizes and it's going to be great for little hands and if you do like to take your project on the go or if you don't have a permanent diamond painting area where you can just kind of leave stuff lay you can always transport this really easily and to keep those little cases in there you have the top for it which also snaps shut now this storage solution can be found over on Amazon and I will link a bunch of these that I found on Amazon down in the description box of this video. Do keep in mind that I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you do use the links, I thank you in advance for that. So Elizabeth Ward is our first one that we're gonna take a look at. So that is the first storage solution um, option that you have, right? Next up, you have everyone's favorite, Harbor Freights. Now, Harbor Freights are a little bit hard to get your, your hands on if you live outside of the U.S. Unless you have a friend that lives in the U.S. that can send them to you, finding these outside of the U.S. is a little bit difficult. But they are one of the most popular ones in diamond painting because, as you can see, again, all the little spots. Now, the case and the little pieces, it will tell you it comes with 25 or 24 pieces. So it's counting the outer box as well, including all the little boxes, right? Now, like the Elizabeth Ward, it has the snaps on it. Again, great for folks that have little tiny humans in their house, whether it be your grandbabies or your babies. And then each case has a little snap on it. Now, these aren't as tight as the Elizabeth Ward, but they are still on there tight enough that it still will take a little bit of elbow grease to get it off there. So if a little hand does happen to get a hold of it, you'll probably catch them before they're able to actually open it. So these are called the Harbor Freight Containers and they'll come with 24 little cases, 24 of these little boxes in this big box. So if it says, it says, if it says 25, I believe, which is what I think it says. If it says 25, it's counting the outer box as well. There's 24 of these inside of this box. As, as you can probably see, you can fit more of them in there than that, but it'll only come with 24. And this is another great solution to storing diamonds in, especially if, again, if you need to take and put this away somewhere where it's safe and secure and it's not going to fall over and slip and fall because it is fall proof because of the clasp on the side there. Nothing's getting out of there. So unless you actually have it open, obviously, um, your little cases might fall, but they don't pop open if you drop them, which of course is great. But they're, they're, they're pretty pretty good with staying closed. You don't have to worry about anything happening to your drills if they happen to fall off your table and this is actually closed, okay? So Harbor Freight is our next container. And again, check the description box. This is going to be over at the Harbor Freight store. So if you have a Harbor Freight near you, you're going to look for that. The next storage solution we're going to look at, which I don't know if there's drills in it, but we're going to look at it anyways. I have a horrible time getting down. <laughs> 
So this is called the Craftmates Lockables. Craftmates Lockables, again, can be found over on Amazon. Has these two little clasps. And this used to be one of my absolute favorite, favorite uh, things to diamond paint with. Please excuse all the dog hair as the dogs. And yeah, you get it. <laughs> but the Harbor Freight, or Harbor Freight, but the Craftmate Lockables were really popular when I first started diamond painting. And one of the things I loved about these, also one of the things I hated about it, is that you have this little release button on the side here. So if you try to open this, if it falls, nothing's coming out of here, correct? But to open one of the containers, you have to press that button. To open any of the other containers while that one's open, you have to still press the button. So you have to press the button to open all of them. So kitting up and down make it, is made real easily because these aren't going to slip open and pop open and spill drills. So that's one plus side to it. I just hated the fact that I had to press the button every time I wanted to open up another section of this um, case. But it is spill proof. I will tell you that it is spill proof. It is pet proof as long as you close it correctly. Um, it can hold a wide variety of drills and it was just a really great storage solution because it also came with this book that you could put them in. And as you can see, it does collect dog hair. <laughs> my apologies, the dogs lay where I keep some of my storage solutions. So you're gonna see a little bit of dog hair. Um, so yeah, sorry, I'm trying to get it out of here because it's, yeah, it's, I have a German Shepherd and a Husky, okay? <laughs> trying to keep dog hair off of anything in my house. It just belongs here now. So you also have the little storage case that you can stick these in and it keeps them, of course, safe from pet hair. <laughs> you just wanna make sure you close them properly. So you wanna make sure that they're fully closed and you have this cool book. Now this one holds, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So each one of these little uh, things here holds seven different colors and you're getting that four times times two. So <laughs> I know I just gave you a lot of math. So it's gonna hold quite a bit of colors. And again, if you're someone who likes to take your diamond paintings on the go or if you don't have a permanent spot to sit with your diamond paintings, it has these little clasps as well. Those little clasps do keep them in there from falling out so you don't have to worry about them falling out once they're in this little book. And it also has a spot on the back where you can mark or put a picture of what you're working on back here so that you know exactly what is kitted up in this storage solution. This was a really, really popular storage solution because again, it was spill proof. And so you didn't have to worry about like your tiny humans getting a hold of it. And even if they were able to possibly get into one of the things, which is probably like this first one, um, they wouldn't think to keep pressing that button to open it unless you have a really smart kid and then you got problems. <laughs> you got you got problems because they probably gonna try to get it to other colors in that as well. But for the most part, it was a really nice storage solution and it, again, tiny human proof, really good for storing drills and you got to store quite a few drills in this. So it does hold, I think almost 50 drills uh, colors. So another great option for storage drill solutions. And then the next one. The next one is also an Amazon find. It's these cases like this. Now there are different types of these cases, but they're all essentially the same. So this one is the one that I got off Amazon. So when you unzip it and you open it up the correct way, one, it'll come with labels and baggies, I believe, which you can use if you would like to. It has this nice mesh net. The casing is hard. It's not a soft case. It's a hard case. And then, of course, you have the little cylinders. Now, the little cylinders don't hold that many. I think they might hold maybe a thousand drills. So you're not getting a, you're not able to hold a whole lot in these, which is one of the reasons why this was never really one of my favorite drill storage solutions. But it does work when you have like snack size paintings and stuff like that. Snack size being 30 by 40 or smaller. So um, it's great for when you don't have a whole lot of drills with a kit or you have a lot of the same color. You can use a lot of these uh, little things here, like the little cylinders for that. Um, this cylinder piece, of course, like pops out. If you wanna say, put this on your table and put something else back here. Um, it's a nice soft case on the inside. So it has like that uh, fabric feel to it. But the outside is a hard shell. 
Again, little human proof. Um, they can play with the zippers, but trying to get into those cylinders, it's going to take a little bit of motor skills there. Um, so nice, safe solution. And again, if it falls or something, it's not going to spill your drills, which is the number one priority when you're diamond painting is to find a nice solution that you're not going to spill your drills or have an accident and it ruined the entire kit for you. Um, so these cases also do come in from Art Dot as well. So Art Dot has a line of these as well with these adorable little designs on this. This is just one of the ones I picked out for you to see with the little kangaroo and koala on it. And it's the exact same thing except for it's just smaller and it comes from a different company. And again, a lot of the times this is what you'll get inside of it. So wax, a pink pen, a couple of green boats, a white boat, some multi-placers. If you ever see this in your kit, this is a drill straightener. You just line it up between the drills and run it back and forth and it will straighten up your drills for you. The big boat, which of course is a fan favorite, some baggies, some more pink pens, and then I think you get some labels in there as well. And then of course you get a funnel. And of course the funnel is to be used for putting that into your little um, cylinder here. That way you can get the drills in and out very easily without spilling them all over the place or trying to like maneuver them in there, especially if you're shaking hands like me. Funnels are a, a blessing. <laughs> so you have your, your, your cylinder storage solution. And these are really good because they keep, they give you an extra spot to put some of your drill stuff again if you're on the go or if you don't have a permanent spot. Just something that you're able to take with you and it has like this nice handle on it. Something you can take with you to uh, transport to wherever it is you're going, whether you're going for a sleepover somewhere or whatnot. And then the last storage solution, which is my absolute favorite baggies <laughs> now i am a big big baggy person and why is that because my permanent storage solution is a trunk it's a trunk with dividers in it that divide each of the colors of the dmc code for your drills so that you can put them and store them away now i like baggies because i don't have to worry about kitting down afterwards i can just stick these in my storage solution my long-term storage solution and call it a day right so these are the Star Ore, the infamous Star Ore baggies. Now, if you've never seen these before, they look like this. Now, one of the reasons why I like the Star Ore baggies is because you can write on them, one. So these three little things here are a different texture than the rest of them. So you can tell it's not as shiny. Um, it's made to be written on. So you can write the DMC number, the symbol, if you can try to draw the symbol on here as well. Um, and what kit it goes to if you want to. Um, I'm going to be kitting up a diamond painting with you today so that you can see what I do with the baggies. So with that said, you're going to need a pair of scissors, pick your favorite storage solution, and then pick out whatever kit you're going to kit up. So I'm going to be kitting up Wakanda Forever coming in from Diamond Art Club. This kit just recently came out with them and I had the pleasure and honor of unboxing it here on the channel. And if you missed that unboxing, I will put it up in the eye. Now this kit has 20 colors or I think it's, wait, it's not 20 colors. I think it's like 24 colors, 27. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the opposite side as it rolls out. Now, I haven't been diamond painting, to be completely honest with you, in a while. Uh, DP Mojo has left me, but that's okay. I still like doing stuff like this and showing folks that are newer to the craft how to get started with the craft. We all kind of lose focus with life and stuff, and so sometimes you might not feel like diamond painting, and that's okay. You don't have to diamond paint. But to get a diamond painting ready in case and for when it does happen and the mood does strike you is, again, going to be a great way to organize your drills. It's going to be a great way to organize your diamond painting and what you're working on next, and it's going to keep everything just so ni nice and tidy so that everything is all together and you don't have to go searching for a color because it's gotten away from you. So, our drill. So in diamond painting, you'll hear these called drills or diamonds. I We do not call them dots. Please do not call them dots. <laughs> and this is a square kit, which means that the shape of these drills is a square. So what I like to do 
is with this company, you get this. This is called a schematic. This schematic gives you all the numbers and symbols and colors of your, your uh, drills, gives you a picture and all your information for that kit. Now, this part, I'm not too worried about. I know what kit I'm working on. This is the part that I'm focused on here. So the part with the, all the numbers and stuff. So what I'm going to do is, right, see the three lines? I'm going to take this because these are all perforated. I'm going to take it off of here like this. And I'm just going to stick it on the bag. Boom. Now I know what color and what symbol comes or is for this kit and even what number. So this is going to correspond and match the number on the side of your legend. So on the side of the legend here, if we look real close, we see number one is one at 101. And to match it, we have that same symbol and stuff coming in for the baggie. So all we have to do now is find number 101, stick it in the bag, boom, you're done. I like this storage solution because it's simple, quick, and easy. And again, it's easier for me to just store stuff away when I'm done with it. So I'm going to kit up this diamond painting with you. Because again, even though my crafty mojo has left me, when it does come back, and it will randomly just come back, when it does come back, I want to work on this kit immediately. <laughs> so I'm going to kit it up. And the first thing I'm going to start by doing is getting all the diamonds separated. So you want to cut them all apart. I would say they, there there is a perforation between them that you can tear them. But I like cutting them for the simple fact that you can mess up that perforation and end up, and end up um, tearing open the entire bag and spilling drills everywhere. It happens to the best of us. Don't worry. Um, so I prefer to cut each bag apart versus tearing them because I don't want to have spilled drills all over the place because there's no use of crying but we're spilled drills so we are going to just take our time cutting all of these apart now kitting up is a whole chore in itself because you're literally having to cut all these apart then find all the bags and colors and symbols and everything so my suggestion would be once you get these all cut apart there's only 27 colors in this kit so I'm going to show you what I do. I'm going to take each color and put them in order. And then I'm going to take the number on the, the schematic and then put those uh, in a way that I can just easily just grab and go. And it just makes your life so much easier. This part is all about organization where my life might be a complete absolute mess. Um, my diamond paintings are not because they're nicely organized. I can't organize a craft room to save my life, but my diamond paintings are nicely organized. And that's part of the joy of the craft. So... We're going to finish cutting all of these apart, and I'm not going to speed this up. I'm going to show you in real time how long this takes, so we might chit-chat a little bit while we do this, so we're not sitting in awkward silence, uh, <laughs> but I hope your day is going well. I hope you enjoy this new craft, and like I said, um, even though I'm not currently at this particular moment diamond painting due to lack of mojo, um, and life has just gotten crazy, when you are diamond painting, it is a very nice, soothing, relaxing craft to do. And if at any time you have questions, feel free to leave those down in the comments section. I do answer my comments pretty frequently. Like I look at them pretty frequently throughout the day just to make sure I don't miss anybody. Um, if you happen to ask a question and I don't answer it right away, don't freak out. Uh, sometimes I just heart it to let you know that I've seen it. And I'll go back later and comment on it so that... Uh, I've had time to think, or there's probably something going on in my house. There's a lot going on in the coffee house nowadays. So um, trying to keep and juggle all that while doing all this, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But that's okay, because diamond painting is one of those great crafts that you can come back to, and it'll be here when you get back. So we're going to show you how to get started with your diamond painting since you're new. And then the last two colors here. All right. So then the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to open this a little bit, and then I'm just going to start organizing. So I have three tins here, and when they're in the string of drills like that with this company, they're not in order. Like, they do not put them in order. They're just, they're just randomly on there, I guess. I don't know. I just work here. 
Um, so you will have to put them in numerical order. You can use your schematic to do so. So I'm taking and getting all my three tens here, my 154s, 823 can get it all together. We're gonna put those over to the side. 101, which is our first one, is gonna be over here. 141, which I know is a white AB, is gonna be over here. Again, if you missed the unboxing, check the eye, or I'll try to remember to put it at the end of the video at the on the end card. Um, we also have number 103 for this kit. So 101, 1. 103, 141, 154, 154, 310. Next up should be 312, which I know is a blue color. 322. 3 and then we have 333. I see 334. I see a couple bags of those. And every once in a while, another great reason why you want to do this is because it makes sure that you have all of your colors. Every once in a while, you may or may not be missing a color. So this is a great way to find out whether you're missing a color or not. So we're looking for a 333. I found all the colors except for that color. So let's see, 349... Three goes over there, 939. Kind of just grouping them as I go here. All right, so I'm not seeing 333. 322, 312. So we'll have to come back to that number. So we're going to do 334 next. Just because I don't want to spend too much time looking for it. We'll probably find it at the end somewhere. Or I might have dropped it. <laughs> All right. 336. So 334, 336, 349. 349. 349. 402. And then 498. Four ninety eight, five fifty, which I know is a dark purple color. And then seven eighteen, which is this beautiful pink color. Eight oh three. That's my old area code. There you go. 823 is going to be my next one. So I have a couple of bags of 823. 902. 902. There it is. 902. 939. We have a couple of bags of 939. There's my 333, so we're going to put that up there. Sometimes they will get mixed up and lost in the sauce, so you want to make sure you get them all out before you freak out that you're missing a color because a lot of the times what will happen, it'll, your eyes will play tricks on you. You won't see it at first, but then once you start organizing, which is another great reason why you want to organize, um, you'll find it in your, your slew of drills here. So the next color after 939 is going to be 3325, which is right here. 3776, which is going to be right here. 38, 30, 38, 34, right there. 38, 37, right there. 38, 41. Z, 762. L, 38, 54. And L, 38, 55. So we do have all of our colors for this kit. So that's all your colors for this kit here, okay? And so our first bag is labeled one for 101. So now I have to do, now this is a method I learned from Pippa. Pippa, I think she had to change her name, but I'm pretty sure if you type in Pippa 
it'll come up. There can't be that many people on YouTube with the name Pippa, P-I-P-P-A. <laughs> this is a trick she showed me when I first started diamond painting, especially when I started using the baggies a lot. And I always had nails on, so it was always a little bit tricky for me to get the bags open without breaking them or stabbing holes in them. So you take your fingers like you're about to snap, but just these two fingers, and you just snap. <laughs> when you do that, it pops the bag open and releases that uh, thing so that you can get your drills in here. So we are going to just trim off the edge. And I have my little cup here. This is a cup from a friend of mine. His name is Verander over on Twitch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off this little piece here and put it in the cup. Just to keep away to the handle the trash for right now. I'm going to put these in their bag. Now that this is empty, we're going to put it in there for right now. And then we're going to seal that bag and replace it on the side over here for where it came from. Okay. And essentially that is how you're going to kit up. This is, this is how I'm kitting up this particular kit. So the next one is going to be number two for 103. So I'm taking that label off. Snap it open, grab 103. I'm gonna put these off to the side as I'm messing up stuff over here. Trim off just a little bit of a corner. Now you're gonna wanna make sure you get all of them in there. Now you always also want to make sure that when you're doing it like this, my next color is 141, that you're not putting the drills in first and then putting the label on. You always wanna put the label on first. I'm sure you can think of why that is, but if you can't think of why, the reason you do that is that if you are working with say 498 and 349, so these two colors here, and you put one of those in the bag, but both bags are empty, you're gonna be trying to figure out which one is which. You know 349 is a red color, but is it a darker red or a lighter red? Is there any other reds in the kit? Is it, you know, maybe a brown color. So to keep from having to guess, always make sure you put your label on your container first. And then fill your container with that color. Because then that way too, if you have to step away and when you come back, you'll know exactly what number you are on because it's already labeled. And you just have to find that particular uh, number. So next up is number four. And then number four is gonna be 154. Now we have quite a few bags of these. And you more than likely, when you get diamond paintings, especially from this company, you more than likely will not use all of these colors. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Diamond Art Club gives you 20% more drills themselves. Most companies will try to give you a little bit extra in case you run out or, or in, to keep you from running out or in case you drop or spill the drills, right? So you won't need all of them. So I wouldn't advise opening all of them unless you actually just want them all open. I would open all of them, but maybe one or two. So we're gonna put two in this bag. So we got one in there now. There's a little bit of static and that's okay. If you do happen to have static in your drills, just get a little piece of dryer sheet and put in there. Do you see the static in there? They're jumping around like little bouncy beans. So we're just gonna keep tapping it until we can get them all out. And this will happen based on the humidity of your house, how long the kit has been sitting or whatnot. It doesn't mean the drills are bad. It just means that they have static in them. The atmosphere changes in your house, whether you're keeping it warm because it's winter time or you're keeping it cool because it's summertime, it will cause some static in your drills. So let me show you how to essentially get rid of that static. Now, shall we? All right, so you're gonna get yourself a dryer sheet. Let me put y'all where y'all can see me because that last part was probably off. So get yourself a dryer sheet. Get the problem drills in question. 
first thing I'm going to do before I even open that bag is I'm going to rub the top of it here. Okay. Then I'm just going to cut off a small piece of dryer sheet. doesn't have to be massively big, just like that. I'm then going to open said bag. Notice how all the drills are falling down as they try to get to the top. I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to give it a little shake to get those drills rubbed up on there. And you should notice a significant difference in the, the static in the bag. So you see how they're not all sticking to the top now. So we're going to push it over to the side over here, get those drills rubbed up on that dryer sheet. And you just want to let it sit in there for a little bit and do its thing, and it'll take rid of it'll get rid of that static in the bag. So we put two bags of 154 in here. We still have three bags left. Now these can be put off to the side of your project or on your table because you're probably gonna be able to use these to just refill your bags. Okay. So I'm just gonna take these three and put them at the top here. The next one coming in is 310. So we got our bag, we got our label. Now this isn't the most enthralling thing in the world. So you're gonna wanna watch like your like a show that you like to watch or listen to an audio book or some music while you do this because it's not the most interesting thing in the world. Like, <laughs> let's get real. It's boring as all get out. It's just sitting here putting labels on your containers or what have you and then just putting drills in a bag. It's not very enthralling. So make sure that you have something to keep your mind preoccupied while you're doing this. Um so that you're not bored out of your mind. So you're gonna just put this in here. And again, because there are so many bags of this, we're gonna open up a second bag. Bloop. We're gonna put the second bag in here. We're gonna close it up. There we go, that bag is ready to go. And again, these other four bags can be put away for when we need to refill. Our next color is gonna be 312. So it's just as simple as this, whether you're using the baggies, the Craftmate lockables, the Harbor Freights, the Elizabeth Wards, or the cylinder jars. Um, it's essentially the same process. Now this bag, it looks like it has a little bit of static in it. So we're going to do our dryer sheet trick to this bag. Once we can get all the drills out of it. And this one does have more than one bag. And you may or may not use it, but I'm going to put it in here just in case. Because it only has one extra bag. So you're going to do it like that. We're going to pop these down. And if you can't happen to get them out of the bag by tapping it, or it's taking longer than you want it to, you can always throw the dryer sheet in the bag, or just blow in it. The humidity from your breath should get some of them to come down and come out, like that. Drop one. Now again, you're going to grab that dryer sheet that you had. I always keep a dryer sheet somewhere in my craft room for this reason. Again, doesn't have to be the biggest piece in the world. We're going to drop it in there. We're going to close it up. Make sure it's completely sealed. Kind of rub it to the top of the bag up there. And that's going to help get rid of those static in the drills. Um... Our next color is going to be 322. So we're going to grab that color, pull it off there, put it on our storage solution. And there are three, two bags of 322, so we are just going to put both of them in here because if they both will fit, I will probably more than likely open them to put them in the bag. So there is a little bit of static in this one as well. And again, depending on the humidity in your area, 
it can cause the static. It's not necessarily bad drills. It's just the humidity in the air. Because you got to remember, these are, at the time that I'm recording this, these are coming from Texas and then traveling to you. So, because of that, sometimes the humidity where you're at is going to be different than the humidity, say, in Texas. And so it will cause static in the drills. And where it is a pain in the butt, don't get me wrong, nobody likes it. Um, it's just part of the craft. It's part of something that happens. So we just found ways to get around it and deal with it. And that's just, just using the dryer sheet. There's a couple of other solutions out there for it. Um, I have not tried them because the dryer sheet always works for me. If you happen to have drills that are stuck together, um, especially if you're new, you can draw. This is the pawpaw method. You can get a medicine bottle. So an old medicine bottle that's empty and a nickel or a coin a heavier coin that will fit in the medicine bottle. Not a dime because dimes are too light. So you want something a little bit that has a little bit of he uh, weight to it. So like a nickel. And then you just vigorously shake the, uh, there's three, 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 where's three, three. Oh, that's, that's what I was looking for. Um, vigorously shake the medicine bottle and that will uh, break some of those diamonds apart because sometimes they will be so staticky that they are stuck together. And nobody wants that. So we're just gonna do it like this. And once you get the hang of it, it should go by fairly, fairly quickly. Da 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 da. Three thirty-four. So you'll be able to move a little bit faster as you go. The static sometimes will slow you down, but that's okay. And again, there's only two bags of these, so I am going to put both bags in here. Because I know they'll both fit. I'm just going to grab a little piece of dryer sheet to put in there just to keep that static at bay. Now, um, just because one bag has static doesn't mean that they all will, but if you wanna be pre prevent it from happening, you could put the dryer sheets in all the bags, but I'm not doing that. I'm only doing it to the ones that are showing me actual problems. So we're gonna put that on there. If you hear snoring in the background, that's just my, my husky sitting next to me. He's been snoring quite loudly lately. <laughs> so if you hear that in the background, uh, that's just Killian Jones. I'm sure we all have companions that sit with us when we do anything. So this is 336. There are three bags of this. I'm going to put two of the bags in here. I'm going to leave one of them in its original casing. So we have two bags of those. Our next one is going to be 349, which is this one here. Again, remember to label first and then chop that edge off. The reason I only do an edge and not the entire top is because I don't want the chance of it spilling out and it kind of makes its own spout. So when you go to pour it out, pour it out real simple. Next one is 402. 
And again, for me, my favorite storage solution is baggies. But if you're watching this and you have diamond painted before, what is your favorite storage solution? Because everyone, and for the folks that are new, check the comment section. Everyone has their own favorites. There's no wrong way to do this craft. There's just your way and everyone else's. So if you like using a certain thing, like there's a lot of folks that do not like using baggies. I prefer to use baggies just because it's more uh, efficient for me. Um, and I don't like to kit down my diamond paintings, which is essentially doing the opposite of this, is taking them out of their storage cases, putting them in baggies, and then putting them away in case you need to use some of the extra drills. I don't like doing all that, so I like to use the baggies. Just makes it a little bit more efficient for me. And again, these are from Star Ore. I will link them again with everything else in the description box of this video. And the reason why I, I wanted to do this video in real time is to show you that it does take a while to do this. This is something that does take quite a bit of time. Um, so when you go to, to sit down to work on this, just know it's not going to take you like 10 or 15 minutes. It can take you anywhere between 30 to, you know, a few hours, depending on how many colors your kit has. And just think this kit only has 27 colors, okay? This kit, I believe, is currently sold out on the Diamond Art Club website. Um, but I will still link it where you can go on their website and put in your email address. And as soon as it's back in stock, because they, they will restock it unless it was a limited edition, which I don't think it was. Um, they will restock it. And when they restock it and you put your email in, it will alert you via email that the kit has come back into stock. This was a very, very popular kit this past weekend, um, which is the weekend that I'm the weekend that I'm recording this. The previous weekend is where you'll find uh, the unboxing. And again, I will make sure to link it in the eye of this video. So those are presenting with static. So we're gonna get our dryer sheet, throw it in there like a little grenade. There we go. But see how organizing them by their their DMC numbers makes it super easy for you to work on versus having them just like sprawled out all over the place and then trying to figure out where all these colors are. Do I have this color? Did I see that color? I think I saw it, but I'm not sure if I saw it. It makes it a lot more organized for you to work on. And again, my life is not organized, but my diamond paintings are. <laughs> little bit of static in that bag so I'm just gonna rip off a piece of that put it in there number 16 so we only have a few more to go I appreciate you and if you've made it this far in the video tell me what your first diamond painting is was or is going to be I would love to know because I'm nosy. <laughs> I am nosy. So my first diamond painting was a fairy that I bought off Jolly Life from Amazon. When I first started diamond painting a few years ago, the craft was still very new. And there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, the legally licensed companies and stuff that they have now. Ooh, we got a lot of tagging in this one. And now I prefer to spend my money wisely which may not always be the case, but I prefer to spend my money wisely and buy something that's not only gonna pay the artist, but also uh, the image is gonna turn out nice. And I know uh, sometimes the legally licensed companies can be a little bit more expensive for that reason, so people will turn elsewhere. I will just warn you, this craft is very much a craft that you get what you pay for. So if you pay $7 for a diamond painting, you're going to get a $7 diamond painting. Um, it's not going to look the best. It's going to look like a blob if there's people on it. Um, there are some diamond paintings that look really good and they're rendered very very well, which rendering just means that the what they look like with the drills on it uh, turned out really good. And then there's some 
which is like 90% of the time, where it won't, and it'll just look like nothing, and it'll be sad and disappointing, but you spent $7 on it, so you gotta remember, this craft is very much a craft of you get what you pay for. Try to get all those drills in there. One more, come on. This drill is fighting for its life. There we go. And once I get it in there, of course, dryer sheet time. We're gonna do it like that. We're gonna close it up. And put it off to the side there. All right, our next one is 823. We have a couple of bags of those. We're only gonna open up two of those bags. And if you want to secure that on there even better, you can put tape on it, or you can stick that label on the inside of the bag at the top here so you can see it. Um, I don't mind sticking them on the bag itself. I've never had a problem with it falling off, and for the one or two times I might have, I'm pretty sure I just put a little bit of tape on it and it stayed on just fine. And again, we're only doing two bags into this bag. Now, I want to say each one of these bags is holding 5,000 drills or diamonds. Um, so if you're wondering how many, you know, this can hold, I'm going to say about 10,000. I'm going to say about 10,000. Um, I think that that's obviously more than 1,000 drills. So I'm going to, I'm just guesstimating. So don't, don't quote me on that. So I need number 902 now. If you've made it through this part of the video and feel free to comment numerous times um you don't have to go back and edit your comment and then just keep commenting there feel free to comment as much as you would like i don't mind at all so if you've made it this far in the video what is your favorite dmc color mine's is 666 now there's a funny story behind it so Hear me out before you start assuming things. <laughs> because when people hear that, they immediately think the bad things. Like, that's a Satan number. Rawr. Um, No. <laughs> In diamond painting, 666 is a very bright, vibrant, very vibrant red. Now, I am colorblind. Okay? Yes, I am colorblind. I am red-green colorblind to be exact. So how is how is 666 my favorite color? Mostly just because it bothers other people. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Mostly because it triggers and bothers other people. And I'm that type of person. And if you're that type of person, welcome home. <laughs> um, but no, uh, one of my favorite creatives on this app, her name is Stitcherista. And if you have not checked her out, search her out. Stitcherista. I'll link her, her channel down below. Stitcherista tells a story and she you might be able to get her to tell it again i'm sure she's told it you know since i heard it but if you ask her the story behind 666 and her going to the craft store that story is the reason why it has it's been my favorite color ever since <laughs> so if you see a stitcher research around craft land ask her tell her miss coffee sent you and miss coffee says hi Ask her about the 666 uh, story. It, it's, it's, it's a great story. <laughs> it's not a long story or anything like that. It's just, it's just funny. So, yeah. So, my favorite DMC color is 666. If it wasn't 666, it'd be 550 because I am a very, very big purple person. I love the color purple. 3325, which is this one here, which we can see is filled with static. So before we even get that out of there, we're going to cut off our dryer sheet. I'm going to shake it like a pack of Kool-Aid. Some of y'all get that reference. 
we're going to open this up. Make sure it's ready. I'm just going to kind of rub this around the, the top of this here. And I'm going to stick it in there. There we go. The next one is 37.76. I like doing stuff like this in real time because I don't ever want people to think that any part of this is easy or fast. If you're looking to get through it fast, you aren't going to enjoy yourself, believe me. As someone who used to be very fast at this craft, I, I, I sucked the enjoyment out of it and made it more of a competition because I'm a very competitive person sometimes. Well, I used to be, not so much anymore. Um, and I kind of sucked the fun out of it for myself for a while there. And I couldn't figure out why, and it's because I was rushing. So this is not a craft that you, feel, you should feel that you need to rush where we're excited to get to the end result, the journey to get there is just as fulfilling as finishing the kit. So just enjoy the journey. Enjoy the time you have with the kit, working on the kit, because there's going to be times where this, that particular kit that you're working on is brought up and it's going to bring back good memories and not ones of you rushing through it because you just want to get it done so you can get on to the next one. Don't worry, your other diamond paintings are going to be there. You don't need to rush. So we're on number 22 out of 27. So 3834. I'm just going to pour it right in there. Got a couple of little staticky drills in there. Nothing too major. Nine thirty nine was the extra bag. I'm just gonna put it like that. Then next up, we have thirty eight thirty seven, which is this purple color here. Very pretty, pretty, pretty purple color. It's always nice to have a storage little space for trash so you don't have trash all over your desk. And see how nicely and neatly everything is still organized. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. 3841 should be our next one. And nothing about this craft should be stressful to you at all. So that's why I'm preaching to you from someone who's learned from experience. Take your time. You don't need to rush. They're not your your paintings aren't going anywhere. I can already see the static in this bag. So again, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna stick it inside of there, I'm gonna rub it around the exit of the bag so that when they hit that point, um, it'll knock some of the static out of them, just to make it a little bit easier to get into the storage bag. And then we're going to do it like that. Whoop! I think we lost a couple of those. That's okay. That's another reason why they give you extra. <laughs> For stuff like that. So, 24. And then the next one is Z, which is our fairy dust drill, which is going to be this one here. We can already see little jumping beans in there. So again, we're gonna open the bag to get it ready. Rub this on the front here to get that ready to get the drills out. Drop that in the bottom of this bag here.
So this is going to be your fairy dust drill through Diamond Art Club. And the fairy dust drills are like the ABs. They just, they're the ones that have the glitter on them. You might have heard me call them zebra drills, but they are called fairy dust drills. And this next one is L3854. I don't think the rhinestone drills are what Diamond R Club calls the iridescent drills. I don't think they get static. I don't know. Maybe. I'm sure they all get static. I just never really experienced it. So again, I'm just going to pour that in there. This is probably one of the few times that I've seen a square rhinestone, so that's cool. And then for our last one, which is number 27, this is L3835. static in there. And because it did present with a little bit of static, of course, we're just going to dr throw a dryer sheet in there. Boop. So now... You have this left. Now, I wouldn't get rid of this because you can reuse these labels on other things. You can always use a Sharpie and write a number or a symbol on there if you plan on adding more enhancements. This is a great way to have labels for those enhancements so you don't have to write on the bags because the good thing about using the labels that come with the Diamond Art Club uh, kits is if you do run out of a color or you need to use it for another kit or something, one, it's already labeled. Two, if you want to reuse these bags, you can just pull those labels off because they don't stick on like you think. So there's not they can pull off real easy. Um, they don't leave residue. And then they go back on real easy. See? So you can always reuse those bags if need be. And then, like I said, you can always use these for enhancements and stuff. Always remember to reduce, reuse, recycle if you can. And then, of course, we are done. All of our trash has been put here into this cup, which I can easily take over to the trash can and just dump. And then our drills are laid out all nice and pretty in their new storage solution, which for me, again, is the baggies. And then what I'm going to do next, again, because I don't diamond paint very often. My crafty mojo has left me. But don't worry, it'll come back eventually. Um, this happens sometimes. So remember the bag that they came in? I'm going to put them back in the bag. So I'm going to just put them in numerical order this time because I can. So I'm just going to grab all the bags. I'm going to very nicely just stick them back in here. And they will fit because that's the bag they came out of. So why wouldn't they fit? So I'm just going to leave the extra bags down for a minute. And I'm just going to kind of spread them out. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. And just lining them up in there nice and neatly. Three and one. And then I'm just going to add the extra ones in here as well. Now, whether you're not working on this kit right away or you're going to be putting it away uh, and you just wanted to get it started, 
this is a great way to restore them. So you're just going to put them back in that bag, which again, they should all fit. I'm going to just bounce them up and down a little bit here to get them to kind of adjust to the shape of all the other bags. I'm going to roll this. And do it like this. Now all my bags are back into the plastic that they came in. Now, when working with a diamond painting that is partially done, so say you have some diamonds on this, but you do need to put it away. It's one of the reasons why I tell people to save their boxes until they're completely done. Um, you're going to roll this kit with this part sticking out. So you're going to roll it backwards, okay? The reason you're doing that is to give your diamonds room to breathe because if you mush them together, they're going to pop off. So you always want to roll with the drills facing out like this and roll it this way, but because there are no drills on this kit, I'm gonna roll it like this. Now, you don't necessarily have to put it back in the plastic that it came in, so like the plastic sleeve. I do like to put it back in the plastic sleeve because as you saw with my Craftmate lockables, I have dogs with a lot of fur. <laughs> and it's one way to keep the fur off the pretty part on the back that's all nice and soft. So I will put it back in its sleeve, put it back in its sleeve, just to protect it from all the dog hair and stuff, and then put it back in its box. And there you have it, all kitted up and done. <laughs> So as you can see, that took about an hour and that was me showing you other storage solutions, kitting this up, getting it put back where it belongs. And now I can put this next to my desk for whenever I'm ready to work on it. So with that said, I'm glad that you got to this point of the video. Thank you so much for your support here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind sharing this video with your friends or anybody else that might be interested in diamond painting, as it, if it helped you, it might help somebody else as well. So I thank you in advance for that. Again, please check the description box of this video where I'm gonna have links to Amazon and the other companies that sell the storage solutions, including the baggies that were used here today that come from Star Ore. Um, so again, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, or any anything else diamond painting related that you would like to see me work on, please leave that down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But until next time, guys, stay safe out here in these crafty streets and always remember to be kind to others because you never know what somebody else is going through. Be courteous because it's the right thing to do and always stay cool. And whether I see you in YouTube land or I see you on Twitch, either way, I'll see you when I see you. Bye, guys.